The blood of Jesus, God's Son, purifies us from all sin. Amen. The Word of God we want to consider today is again our epistle reading for this past Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Easter, Good Shepherd Sunday. We're looking at 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, where the Apostle John was inspired to write, How great is the love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. My dear friends in Christ, there definitely are some apparent disadvantages in being God's children because of how the unbelieving world around us might treat us, probably will treat us. But John says, how great is the love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God and that is what we are. Can we emphasize enough those last words that John just said there? And that is what we are? Do we realize how blessed we are to be God's children? See, the vast majority of the people in our world are not God's children, not his believing children. But God says, but John says that God the Father lavished his love on us and like a torrential downpour, he pours his love down upon us. We are God's children. We are heirs of eternal joy and glory. Just think about what that means. And Jesus tells us that no one will be able to snatch us out of his hand. In Sunday's gospel reading, Jesus said he is our good shepherd who not only died for us, but who also carefully watches over us, who are like sheep who love to wander, who are inclined to wander away from him and his word, but he always wants us to be with him. These are indisputable advantages to being God's children, that God wants us with him to be sheep, or lambs in our good shepherd's flock. But no matter what physical or, well, psychological persecution we may have to endure as believing children of God, no matter what the unbelieving world, no matter what Satan may hurl at us, by God's amazing grace, we're still his children and heirs of heaven. Oh, as Martin Luther said in his hymn, A Mighty Fortress, and take they our life, goods, fame, child, and wife, let these all be gone, they yet, yet have nothing won. The kingdom ours remaineth. May God help us always to remember what's truly important, and that's not our earthly well-being and comfort. What's truly important is our eternal souls, which God says he's going to keep safe with him for all eternity. John said, Dear friends, now we are children of God and what we will be has not yet been made known. Oh, most of us have spent time wondering just exactly what heaven will be like. And oh, some people do say that heaven will be like our, our favorite earthly hol holidays all wrapped together. And being able to do whatever we would enjoy most. Most try to explain what heaven will be like. Many try to explain what heaven will be like, but we don't really know what it's going to be like, nor can we know what it will be like. However, we can know that heaven's joy will far surpass our wildest imagination. John wrote, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. When 
Jesus comes back on Judgment Day, what he's going to do is he's going to change us who believe in him so that we're no longer going to have a sinful nature, so that we'll no longer have the desire to do anything that's contrary to God's will. We'll be like God in that we'll be without sin forever. We'll have perfect glorified bodies similar to the glorified body that our Savior had when he rose from the dead. Sin, sickness, sorrow, and pain, they'll be gone forever. Oh, there was this New York businessman who commuted to work regularly by ferry boat. He noticed a new passenger on that boat one day, and it was a young boy with a shoe shine kit. The man spoke kindly to him and paid him to shine his shoes. And from that day on, from that day on, whenever the businessman boarded the boat, that young boy was there for him. That young boy was there for him, approached him with a happy smile, offered to carry his briefcase and to brush off his clothes if if they got dirty with anything without respect, expecting any reward. And after a week or two, the man asked the youth what made him so attentive. And the youth said, Sir, the first time you met me, you called me my boy. Till then, I didn't think I belonged to anyone because my parents are dead. But you are so kind, you always call me your boy. Soon afterward, the businessman made arrangements to have that young fellow taken care of. And as that young boy was so thrilled, think of how thrilled we can be because our Heavenly Father does something similar, but so much greater. What our Heavenly Father does for us now and, and forever takes care of us lavishes on us his love. John said, how great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. A baby during its nine-month existence in a mother's womb would find it difficult not only to imagine, but also to accept details about what it would be like its first future existence would be like in this world. Oh, reports about things like light, space, stars, mountains, trees, skyscrapers, animals, and other people might seem too good to that yet-to-be-born baby to imagine. Yet that yet that yet-to-be-born baby could never imagine what was ahead. And now what we could say is that we're in the womb of this earth waiting to be delivered to God's eternal kingdom and we can't really grasp what lies ahead. We can't grasp what lies ahead in heaven. But we do know from what the scriptures tell us that there will be complete unending joy and none of the troubles we face in this life ever again. We'll be with our gracious God forever. How blessed we are because of his amazing grace that God calls us his children, his boys and girls, and he wants us to be with him forever. What indisputable advantages there are in being God's children. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, help us always to recognize your amazing grace and love for us and, and for all. We deserved your eternal wrath and punishment, but instead you gave us your Son and your love, and you made us heirs of your heaven. You want to help us and all people to live as your believing children. You want us to enjoy your heaven forever. 
Thank you for your amazing grace and love for us and for all. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.